everybody doing a video this time about how to set up to do and execute a virtual sound check through your XR18 so the the two main things you need are the XR edit software and um, you know connected in through the USB and through the network to your PC and then you need a, some sort of DAW I use waveform. Um, <clears throat> you can use uh, whatever DAW you're comfortable with as long as you can um, connect your DAW uh, input and outputs to your XR18 like I've done here and your DAW is capable of doing um, each of the individual channels as a separate track through the USB interface into the PC that you're using. As long as you can do that this will work. So, um, the first thing you need to do is set up your um, XR, um, your XR18 to be able to do the recording. Um, so, the USB sends, so this is where um, the, the USB is getting sent out uh, into your PC and then connecting into the, you know, for your DAW, the input. Um, and what I do is I, I set all of the channels from 1 through 18 to the analog output. This is the earliest point that you can pick the signal up. So this is literally the mic. Um, there's not even gain staging, at, I believe, I'm pretty sure. I don't think there's even gain staging being done at this particular point in the signal path. Um, so th this is where I like to take it because it gives me the, the most, um, the rawest input, I guess. So in, um, in the XR edit, you just open your in out, go to the USB sends, and you can select um, each one of those and then... Um, you know, select which um, which particular input um, part of the path you want for um, for your USB sends, and like I said, I set them all to analog. Um, once you've set that up, then really all of this other stuff can stay the same for now. I happen to have um, a couple of USB inputs already. Um, for a, a guide and a left and right track that I get from my um, my playback software. It's, it's just something that, that is a subscription service I use to get um, backing tracks so I can get the drum, you know, get, get tracks without drums and, and be able to play and record to them. Um, so once, once you've got that all done, then on the DAW, uh, again, you know, you want to make sure you've got your settings, um, for your audio, audio devices, taking the input and output from the XR18. And then um, just make sure that all of your different input and output channels are set to be single. Do not have the, uh, you know, treat as stereo pair option on for inputs or outputs. Okay, so just leave them um, as singles. That'll help. That'll help you down, down the road. Um, and then just set up a project or... Um, you know, whatever the equivalent is in your particular DAW that will, uh, sorry for this pop-up help <laughs> thing. I don't use this a lot, so I kind of leave that on, but uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so now I have tracks 1 through, um, in my case, 1 through 16. Um, I'm not doing anything with the uh, tracks 17 and 18 or channels 17 and 18 at this point. Um and then you can see each one of the uh, tracks is mapped to a separate input, corresponding input. So track one, input one, track two, input two, track three, input three, and so on. And then I set my outputs to be exactly the same. So track one, output one, track two, um, output two, track three, output three, and so on. Um, so that keeps everything nice and organized and um, also it's going to help later on. So once you've got all this set up, then just go ahead and record. Record whatever um, instruments, vocals, um, you know, whatever it is that you're going to adjust or, or be able to, um, you know, process later on through your XR18. 
uh, first. So I recorded an entire song, um, and I just played through it with the backing track, and um, and then I um, created just this little loop around a section here, just so I could play this part over and over and over again um, more easily. So this, is, this is what I've got, and all you're hearing right now is just the um, backing track, because in the XR18, those are the only channels that actually have um, USB input set up right now. So you're not gonna hear, even though the drums are playing through all of these other channels, you won't hear them uh, until you go back into your XR18 and change your input. And I just muted this, um, but, you know, you can, from here, you can mute um, different things. I just don't think anybody will appreciate the click. Um, playing in the background there. All right, so now I want to play all the rest of this through my XR18. All the rest of these, these one through 12. Um, so I go back to my in-outs now and um, go to my USB returns. And there's, there's this set of buttons over here in your USB returns. Off is for the analog. Um, and then if you click on the channel 1 through 16, that's going to switch channels um, 1 through 16 to the analog inputs. So now my um, all of the input channels are um, switched to USB. All right, so you can see now they're all set to USB um, for each one of these. Now when I go back and play my my full mix of tracks here. Now you're getting the drums symbol. You're getting all of the the rest of um, the twelve the full set of sixteen tracks. Now we're all playing out of the DAW and um, into the XR eighteen and going through all of the processing. So you're hearing the reverb, you're hearing whatever EQing, compression, um, you know, gating, the whatever other um, effects are, are here. You're hearing all of that um, completely processed because I'm taking the main left right out now and I'm actually bringing that into the recording of this video, right? So, um, and, and this extra mic. Um, so that's how you're hearing all that. But now what you can do is as you, you're, you know, playing, whoop, let me go back into the loop. As you're playing this, you want to, um, just work on, let's say, the snare. So I can now just go to my snare top mic. Gets, gets a lot of bleed that mic. <laughs> now let, me, um, let me make sure I mute those two. So y you can hear a little bit of um, cymbal bleed and so on. So that's just the snare top mic. But nonetheless, um, you know, you could even work on that if you wanted to uh, eliminate some of that other bleed. From, I don't mind um, getting the bleed that but I can hear the, the, the snare pretty clearly um, so now at this point if I wanted to adjust the EQ so now you can see my EQ you can see that spike right there for um, where the overtone is kind of coming across so I'll shut up and hear that So now if I turn the EQ on, you'll hear the difference. So you can go channel by channel, and then you can turn, you know, everything um, back on if you want to. Uh, what is this one? Group three? Yeah. Um, so if you if you want to just go back to the full mix again. Uh, you can do that. And again, you make all your adjustments. In
and you could just continuously loop through um, whatever it is that you need to adjust back through here. So um, that's all there really is to it. Once you've made all of your adjustments, um, what I try to do is get this back into a, a, a more normal state. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go back into my in outs. I'll turn this back off. Now, in my case, um, it did switch these three channels also back to the analog inputs. So um, what I'm going to do is go back into here and just make sure I change um, these back to USB. Um, and then you can you can go in um, and and take a new snapshot if you want and save it. Um, you can save a new scene, right? And um, then recall that snapshot anytime you know you need to reset back to uh, you know you just you just hit load and that will load all of your previous settings back in again um, and that's it once you've saved it all or or done whatever you're gonna do then you can just happily go and you know maybe have if you have a sound engineer to do a, a, a more live um, yeah, I find that this gets it pretty pretty close though and and it's a very useful way to for especially for a drummer I, I can't be sitting there trying to adjust things while i'm playing the drums it just doesn't work maybe a keyboard player can hit a few keys with one hand and um you know make adjustments with the other and especially since you're not hearing it ambient in the room but you know this would be impossible for drums because you've got so much ambient sound from the drum you'll never hear the subtle differences in um what this is doing with a live situation Unless you had a sound engineer in a sound isolation booth um, doing that for you. That's just, there's no other way um, as far as I know. So uh, hopefully you found this helpful and um, useful. So if you have, please like and um, share it with whoever you think might also get something out of it. And, um, you know, if you want to, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try to keep posting more videos periodically but um this is on just uh, doing the uh, virtual sound check with uh, xr18 running the xair software so um have a wonderful day and thank you so much for uh tuning in and listening <laughs>